Hey guys, so today we're going to be practicing more completing the squares. And we're going to do our fourth assignment of completing the squares. Um, so we're going to start by just rewriting our C values and creating new C values um, for these. So remember the C value is your B divided by 2 squared. Okay, so 20 divided by 2 is 10. And 10 squared is 100, so that would be my C value that would complete my square. Then um, if you have an odd number, you would do 13 divided by 2, and we're going to square it. But this time, don't divide. Don't get decimals. So you're just going to leave it as a fraction. You're going to square the top, and you're going to square the bottom. So 13 squared is 169 and 2 squared is 4. So I would add 169 fourths to this problem. Um, now, number 2, if I put on the quiz, but it's kind of tricky. So you have to remember fraction rules because your fraction, your calculator will do this fraction for you. Um, and I'll show it to you. So on this one, we're technically doing 21 divided by 17, and then that divided by 2. Well, you can't have a fraction within a fraction. Um, so if we do this, we get, uh, oh, it did it. Didn't do it last time. OK, anyways, if we do this, we're technically multiplying um, by the reciprocal. So you'd technically be multiplying the top and the bottom by 1 half. 21 times 1 is 21, and 17 times 2 is 34, which is what the calculator did. Didn't do it a minute ago. And then we have to square this. So remember, just square the top and square the bottom. Okay, well, I'm done with that one now. Okay, um, let's look at number 8. We'll start with that one. Okay, so number 8, if we remember our steps, the first thing we need to do is look at our A. Our A value is 1, so we're not going to mess with that. Then the next thing we need to do is we need to get this in the correct form. So we got to add our 21 to both sides. We have to move our C over. So we have K squared minus 14K um, equals negative 6 plus 21 is 15. Okay, so then we have to do um, negative 14 divided by 2 squared. So negative 14 divided by 2 is negative 7 squared is positive 49. So I'm going to add 49 to each side. And 49 plus 15 is 64. Okay, and then we can big X. We're going to multiply to 49 and add to negative 14, which would be negative 7 and negative 7. So those are my two factors. X minus 7 squared equals 64. Square root each side. X minus 7 equals 8, and X minus 7 equals negative 8. Add 7 to each side. So 8 and 7 are 15, and negative 8 and 7 is negative 1. Okay, so those are my two answers for this problem. And this is one similar to the things that you've been doing. Um, this one is similar to number 6, is similar to what we've been doing, but it's not as pretty of an ending. So again, we start by subtracting 22 on each side. And also at the same time, we could do 18 divided by 2 squared. 18 divided by 2 is 9 squared is 81. So then I'm also going to add 81 to each side as well. So I'm just skipping steps because we've done this a few days. Okay, so we have a squared plus 18a plus 81 equals negative 22 minus 8 plus 81, 51. So right there, you can tell it's not going to be pretty because that's not a perfect square. Um, I need two numbers that multiply to get 81 and add to get 18. So I've got positive 9 squared. Okay, then we're just going to square root each side. So I have a plus 9 equals negative the square root of 51, and a plus 9 equals positive the square root of 51. Because remember, you could have two answers. Oh, sorry, glitching. 
Oh, heaven. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> it's just where my hand was. Okay, so then we would subtract 9 from each side. And we want that 9 to go first. So it's going to be negative 9 minus the square root of 51. And negative 9 plus the square root of 51. So we need two answers. I did this problem kind of fast. I skipped some steps that we've been talking about for quite a few days. Um, if you need more refreshers on that, I would suggest going back and watching the other videos for completing the square 1, 2, or 3. Probably 2 or 3. Okay, on the back side, let's talk about some more of these. Okay, so we're going to just do 10, 12, and 14 together. So 10 is really similar to the front on number 6. So again, I'm going to subtract 67 on each side. My b value is negative 20, so we're going to take negative 20 divided by 2 and square that to complete our square. Negative 20 divided by 2 is negative 10 squared is 100. So I'm also going to add 100 to each side. So that's what we do on one side, we must do on the other. Okay, so I've got x minus 20x plus 100 equals 2 minus 67 plus 100 is 35. So again, you can see it's not going to be pretty. And if I break down 35, when I square root this guy, it's 7 and 5, so it doesn't reduce my radical. Okay, then if I wanted to, I could big X. So we're going to multiply to C and add to B. So it's two numbers that multiply to get 100, but add to get negative 20, so negative 10 and negative 10. So we have X minus 10 squared equals 35. Square root one side, square root the other. x minus 10 equals square root 35. And x minus 10 equals negative square root 35. Add 10 to each side. So then we want the 10 to go first, plus square root of 35. And since we added 10, it should be a positive. And then x equals, nope, heavens, 10 minus the square root of 35. There's that one. Number 12, just keep doing these last two. Um, I crossed off 16 to the end because some of those are just kind of not very nice. Okay, now this one, it has a leading coefficient. I would suggest moving your C first before getting rid of your leading coefficient, okay? So we're going to add 68 to each side, and that's usually because when we do get rid of this 5, we have to divide every single piece. 8 divided by 5 is not pretty, so let's keep as few fractions as possible. That makes 0. 68 minus 8 is 60. So now this is nice. Um, I can't figure out my b value just yet because I have this cute little leading coefficient, which we haven't had yet. So again, when you have a leading coefficient, move your c first, and then everything gets divided by 5. We're going to take a fifth of as much from everything. Um, and that keeps our equation equal. So my 5's go away, leaving n squared. So whatever your leading coefficient is, your a value, that's what you're going to divide by. So n squared minus 20 divided by 5 is 4 equals 60 divided by 5 is... I don't want to mess it up. Okay, 12. That's what I thought. Okay, now I have a lot smaller numbers, which is I actually like a lot better. Okay, now I've got my b value, negative 4 divided by 2 squared. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2 squared. Two, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. So I'm going to add 4 to each side. I've got n squared minus 4n plus 4 equals 12 plus 4. And 12 plus 4 is 16. Oh, so that's going to look nice. And we can big x. We're multiplying to get positive 4, but adding to get negative 4. So negative 2 and negative 2. So now I have x minus 2 squared. Remember, this middle term always has the same sign. Um, equals 16. Square root, square root. So that gives me x minus 2 equals, um, the square root of 16 is 4, and x minus 2 equals negative 4. Add 2 to each side. x equals 6, and x equals negative 2. 
Okay, last one. Number 14. Okay, again, I'm going to, I have this leading coefficient of 7, but 10 divided by 7 is not pretty. So let's move our C value over first and see if we can get better looking numbers. Um, and negative 10 plus 8 is 2. So not the greatest, but at least we only have one fraction instead of two fractions. Okay, everything gets divided by 7. Again, kind of sucks. Sorry. Um, but our v, v value is good, so that's nice. x squared plus 2x equals 2 sevenths, just to keep that guy. Then we're going to do 2 divided by 2, my b value squared. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 1 squared is 1. So I'm going to add 1 over here and 1 over here. Now we want to multiply to get 1, but add to get positive 2, so 1 and 1. I have x plus 1 squared equals, and then just use your calculator. Don't, you don't have to reason this out. If you want to, you can. 7, 2 sevenths plus 1 would be 7 over 7 for 1, and 7 plus 2, so this should be 9 sevenths. And then we'll just check. So we've got 2 sevenths plus 1 is 9 sevenths. All right, let's keep going. Okay, so now we have to square root. And this guy is not looking so pretty, but we did these the other day. I think it was like it was last week sometime. Okay, so we have x plus 1 equals, okay, now this guy right here. So remember him. He is technically saying the square root of 9 on top of the square root of 7. Well, I know the square root of 9 is 3, but I don't know what the square root of 7 is. It's not pretty. It's going to be some decimal of sorts. So we have to rationalize the denominator. So we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 7. So on the top, we have 3 root 7, and then on the bottom, we have 7. Okay, so we're going to get this guy right here. So that is this problem. The square root of 9 sevenths is the same thing as 3 root 7 over 7. So x plus 1, our factored number, equals 3 root 7 over 7 and x plus 1 equals negative 3 root 7 over 7. So we're going to minus 1 on each side. And again, you can just use all of this information and plug it into your calculator. So you have a fraction on the top, and then it's 3 root 7. And then on the bottom, we have a 7, and then we're going to minus, oops, minus 1. And then it rationalized for you, so you didn't have to do much, which I'm fine with. So x equals 3 root 7 minus 7 all over 7. So awful. Okay, and then the same thing happens here, but instead we're going to add. So I'm just going to type this guy in again, but plus, and that gives me... Oh heavens, where should I write it? 3 root 7 plus 7 all over 7. If you wanted to, I would accept this answer too. You don't have to do this part like this. In your quiz, why don't we just leave it? We'll just simplify it. We'll just leave it like this. So your answer in your quiz, sorry, now this is a huge mess. Your answer in your quiz will be x equals 1, because we want to put the one that doesn't have the um, wait, what? That's a minus 1. We want to put the number without the radical first. Okay, so we minus 1 on each side, so x equals negative 1 plus 3 root 7 over 7. And then x equals negative 1 minus 3 root 7 over 7. I actually like that better. Sorry. So just do this. You don't have to do this bottom part. But this is what you could do if this was not an available answer on a standardized test. Anyways, let me know if you have any questions, and I will answer you back. Have a great day, guys. Bye.